Hello and welcome to this different vlog, really. I have an interesting story to tell. This happened recently on a Friday morning. I get a phone call from Richard. Do I know Richard? No, I don't know Richard. So, so Richard asked me a few questions about the company I work for. He seems to know quite a bit about me and he's asking whether I can help him out because he's, his old business partner, Donald, ooh, one second. His old business partner, Donald, has, has retired, or Dr. Donald, should I say, has retired and left the country. He's gone back to the UK and he needs someone to help him with commodities. Commodities. Yeah, already red flags. I'm not sure what, what's going on here, but let's let's hear him out. Now Richard, pretty smooth talker. He tells me that he does buying and selling. He's got good sellers and good buyers, and reliable people, and every so often um, he's got, especially one customer he wants me to meet. He says he's in Botswana. He's a Botswana citizen, and he doesn't come to Joburg that much. And he's got the Zambian seller who's here now. And is it Zambian? Tanzanian, sorry, Tanzanian seller. He's got a Tanzanian seller who's he's in the country now. And he'd like me to meet him because when he's not here, he'd, he'd really like it if I could go to the seller, get the goods, go to the buyer, drop off the goods, and then I will get a 40% a profit share. Already, red flags, 40%. Who's willing to give you 40% for just nothing? So I think, okay, maybe it's not that big a, a deal or it's not really 40% or let's, let's see, what, what is the story? So he says to me, let's meet, let's meet and we can discuss it and I'll explain it to you and maybe we can go beat, meet the seller and the buyer. Uh, so I said to him, sure, this is now 10 o'clock in the morning. I said, uh, I've got kids to pick up and things like that. So I'll meet him at half past one and uh, we set the place at Rosebank uh, McDonald's. Um, half past one comes, I go and meet, meet up with Richard. He meets me at the McDonald's. He tells me he's actually got the, the seller uh, close by in Rosebank. If we can go meet up the seller. Now, during this time, we, we, we go back and forth with a few questions. Um, and uh, I'll get back to that just now. But uh, we decided, okay, finally going to meet the seller. He jumps into my car because he tells me he's from Botswana with a five-ton truck and he doesn't want to travel around with a five-ton truck. It's a bit difficult in Santon. And um, yeah, we head off to Rosebank Mug and Bean to have a chat with his seller. Uh, we, we go, we get to Mug and Bean. The seller looks a bit nervous and uh, I've been told now he's going to show us some samples and we can negotiate. And uh, I found out a bit more about what this guy is selling. Uh, we, we have a bit of a chat with Mug and Bean and he tells us that um, his dad and him have a claim on a copper mine in the copper belt. And their main uh, goods are is copper and they have guys that work the copper and make nice ornaments and things and they sell that as well as some leather from ostriches and I can't remember what else. They also find other gems. The thing is he knows we asked to see um, samples but he can't bring everything as samples so he's only bought some of the gems and he says he's got some savarites to show us. I've never heard of savarites before. This is, sounds interesting. So he hands me these two Tsavarats, he says he's got six. Yeah, those are the samples he's got. And uh, he is going to, um, and Richard, sorry. <clears throat> so Richard asks if we can take the samples to get tested. And um, guy's a bit hesitant, but he says, no, okay, fine. Uh, Richard's like wanting all six of them. Come, let's, let's test all six of them. He says, no, 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 because um, he's a bit hesitant. Okay, fine. Uh, he gives us two. I took a quick look. You can describe it as a, a little ball, uh, slightly smaller than a golf ball. Um, it looks it black. It was basically black. It looked almost like molded clay with little bits of um, crystal, like white crystals inside it. Small little white crystals inside it. But there were sections that were completely smooth and black. 
And uh, Richard showed me as we were walking away that uh, when he shone a torch through it, it, it turns nice, nice blue, really pretty color, really nice, pretty blue that shines through it. Now we did tell the seller we'll be back in about 30 minutes uh, to get it tested. And as you're walking away as well, um, Richard tells me normally we would go and meet the buyer in Bedford View. That's where the guy is. But he's, he's, he's close by now in Santon. And um, we can go just go see the buyer. He's, he's, it's actually not the buyer, it's his son. And um, he will test the stone for us and um, see what, what price we can get for it. So we're on our way to the buyer now, potential buyer, I could say. And I hear him on the phone with this guy. And he's telling me, and they, they're talking about, no, no, don't, don't go to the office, office yet. You're much closer to us. We'll meet you there, no worries. We'll meet you there. And he ends up, we'll meet you there in the parking lot. So we get to the back parking lot now, the buyer, and he jumps into the car as well. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit not lacquer, but anyway. Um, the, the buyer now, has some instruments with him, a scale and a hardness tester and he explains to me about the hardness tester um, if it's below 5 it's not good, 6 or 7 it's okay, 8 or above it's really awesome measures the stones, they come up as 10 <laughs> weight of 52 grams, both of them there's a bit of negotiations back and forth between Richard and him and um, he's quite keen to get cash and etc etc and they negotiate 480,000 rand for both of them and during these negotiations I was a bit gumstruck it's, it's a hell of a lot of money really uh, this is supposed to be a semi-precious stone after all it seems very much precious to me but anyway um, so I'm summarizing here so let's carry on going we leave um, the buyer with the two stones he's sealed them well I say sealed them he's just Put a piece of paper over the packet, signed it, and stapled the packet. It would be very easy to to swap that out if you really wanted to, anyway. Um, and uh, we, we proceed back to the cellar. Right, we're in the car. Richard is directing me uh, where to go. I thought we would go back to the Mag and Bean because we told him we'd see him in 30 minutes. And uh, but no, he's already moved. So he's obviously got a car. The cellar. And um, we get to another, another little shopping center, not far from, from Rosebank. And um, we start a negotiation with him. And he wants 260,000 for them. Hmm. That means 220,000 rand profit. Seems, again, a bit too good to be true, hey? Yeah, alarm bells should be ringing. Um, but I was trying to figure out what I was missing. Because this, again, seemed way too good to be true. And okay, fine. So we make a deal. Um, Saturday morning, because now when we were speaking to the, the buyer, he was, I'll give you cash for them right now, but I, I can't go to the bank and draw that money now because the banks are closed. Convenient, isn't it? And uh, we decide, okay, fine. We'll meet on Saturday morning and we will go and uh, pick up the gems and then go to the, bu the buyer, get the cash. We can come back to get the gems, get the other gems, the other four, and then we do it back and forth type thing. Great, this, this sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Okay, so, so far, what are the red flags? Well, why would somebody want to do this? Why would somebody want to just give us 40%? Well, the reasons given kind of, kind of make sense. They could be true, if you think about it. He's a businessman. He comes from Botswana. Um, he's not here often enough and he needs somebody to be able to do the deals while he's here, okay? Um, kind of makes sense. Uh, the reason he didn't have a car kind of makes sense. But look at everything so far. So we have, I don't have any identification for anybody I've been tattered to. No car, no nothing. Um, so what could go wrong here? Well, um, a few things. <laughs> so firstly, I don't know anything about gems. It could be that there's, uh, you need licensing for it. So the cops could pitch up. That's why he's doing it. He's trying to hide his identity. So I'm the full guy, basically. So that's why the money's there. Because if something does go wrong, 
then I'm the one that falls for it. I get into jail, my accounts get frozen, etc. That, that could be one of the reasons. Let's look at another one. Uh, money laundering. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. But again, frozen accounts, illegal, not the best things to happen. Okay, how about it's just plain robbery. So um, he lures me to a place now that's not public. Uh, to say like an office park or something and it's not too public and then they steal the, the car they steal my wallet to my phone could be something like that but I don't think it's any of these no I do not think it was any of these things I think what would have happened if I did pitch up on Saturday morning by the way there were phone calls and things that he did not he was not very happy with me if I pitched up Saturday morning um, the seller would have asked for money so they would have wanted me to go to the bank, draw the money, 260,000, uh, bought the stones from the seller, and then pitch up at the, the buyer, and all of a sudden, Richard's disappeared, the buyer's not there, it's fake stones. I, I think that's, that's the more likely of the case, of what would happen. Now, the way I've phrased all this, I've left out quite a bit of the niceties and the nuances of the situation. That seemed very convincing. So I think the way I'm telling it, it doesn't sound very convincing, but it did sound very convincing when I was there in the moment. And um, I could very easily have been caught, I think, if I did not speak to other people and discuss it and think it through properly, really. And what have I left out? Well, quite a lot that you can't really tell. Um, the way the guys were dressed, the way they spoke, very good English, I must say. Uh, the documentation I was shown when uh, at different places, uh, the way they presented themselves, it, it really sounded very convincing. And I was very tempted to go on Saturday morning just to see. I mean, if it was the way I thought it would be, then I just wouldn't draw the money out the bank accounts and I'd be fine. Um, but if it was another, another thing, like a robbery or something, I might not have been fine. And the whole time, I had Amber with me. That dog scares people. Now the two things I've paid much attention to is um, it's ever right is supposed to be green not blue. Here's a picture and it did not look like that. Uh, and in fact I tried to find something that looked like that I could not. So I don't know what it was they were showing me. It was not it's ever right. Although it might, there is a slight chance it was a slight chance that it was because it's ever right do come with slight blue tinges but I could not find a picture of that blue I mean it's green it's a green it's a green gem um, also a friend of mine with true call on his phone checked the number out and it came up as Richard Botswana spam um, I'm, I'm fairly sure this was a scam attempt uh, I don't know what, what do you think was was this a missed opportunity or did I actually just stop being scammed and um, yeah, you know, in this, this trying times where, where everyone needs money, it's tempting to, to think, hey, maybe I can make a quick buck here. But no, there's no such thing as, as a quick buck. You have to work for your money. So I think I, I narrowly missed something here. And uh, anybody can be scammed. Don't think you not, it's not possible for you to be scammed. You can be scammed. You must be alert. Yeah, they did it on a Friday. When, when we're relaxed and, and not thinking too much about it. And they, it's very smooth. I mean, it's, it's a great big syndicate and it's very, very smoothly done. I was, I'm impressed, it really is. If it, it is a scam, and I'm pretty sure it is. I'm very impressed with the whole thing. But, but please tell me what you think. I'll be interested to know. Uh, should I have done something differently? And um, yeah, God bless, bye.